Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you the much requested how to make techno like Fiac. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets. All that stuff in this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's dive in. So, this loop you heard in the intro, the first sound we have is the kick, which sounds like this. So you can hear, pretty straightforward techno rumble kick. The main thing here that makes this kick different from a lot of other techno kicks is the sample going into it. If you listen to it, this is the kick sample that I used. So you notice how, it's a little bit quiet, but you can hear, it's a lot more like boomy and kind of low end heavy. It doesn't really even have much of a click in the high end. You know, it's really just more of like a doom. And so that's what we're going for here. Like when I was making this kick sample, I even low passed it a little bit. Like that's how much you want it to really just be like no end. It's a hard sample to find, but it just really needs to be that perfect like kind of deep no end kick like this where like you still get that punch and that impact in the no end. It just doesn't have like the high end like like you would typically have. Like yesterday's video, I literally layered a clicky kick on top of a kick like this to try to make it more clicky. This is like the opposite of that. You just want like this deep, low, subby sort of kick going into it. And like I said, it's a hard sample to find. If you want this one that I made, link is at the top of the description. After that, I've got a little bit of drum bus. Here's without this. And then with it, so you can hear, it just kind of helps to fill in the kick a little bit more. It makes it hit a little bit more. You know, one thing that's kind of interesting here is like, when you do have a kick like this, which is more subby and deep, you kind of have a bit more room to add more saturation than you normally would. Like, honestly, I wouldn't usually put a drum bus here. But it's because the way saturation works, as a lot of you probably know, is you're adding more harmonics on top of a sound. That's why it sounds bigger and fatter is because there's literally just more harmonic content that you're hearing. So if you have a sound that's very deep and low, you can add a lot of kind of higher harmonic stuff on top of that. Versus like if you had a kick that was already very clicky and like kind of punchy in the mid-range, then you wouldn't be able to do as much of this. So it's kind of like a trade-off, you know, it's a deeper kick, but you can get it fatter in the long run, I think. Oh yeah, then we have the rumble, so we've got a dry chain here. And then the rumble, the rumble with this style is made using a reverb. The secret here is just turning the decay time down, and also turning the density up. I find this to really help, because it kind of just makes it more full. An issue I have a lot of times when I use reverb to make a rumble is the reverb can be a little bit thin, you know, it can be very kind of like sort of just small, but when you turn that density up, you really get that fullness to where it becomes like a full bass line. And yeah, then after that we have this amp. This is what's giving us the rumble, so here's without it. And you can hear we're getting that. That actually probably sounds kind of cool with the main kick but yeah so you can hear obviously this distorts the reverb a lot but what it's doing is it's just dialing it back so that it's going to be just in the low end now and yeah then you can see we have this low pass after that where that really dials back so the amp gives it that low end like kind of rumble but then it's got some stuff on top of it and then we dial that out with the low pass and get just the rumble and there you go and then I just have it side change to the dry kick a little bit of an EQ cut at 100 hertz which makes room for the dry kick because that's typically where that punch is hitting and yeah and then after the rumble the only other thing that we have is just a bit of drum bus to kind of glue it all together this really helps with the fatness of the kick here's without it And then with it, so you can hear like it brings out the rumble, again it makes the rumble more of like a solid bass line on its own, it makes the punch fatter, it just really helps with everything and it kind of glues it all together too. And yeah that's it for the kick. After that we have this jungle break which sounds like this. So what this is, is it's this sample. Sort of like an old school German bass jungle style break. And then what I've done is I've just taken it and chopped it up so we get this little. 
And then the main thing to notice here is like the detail work. Like it's not really that hard. You kind of just get in and start chopping it. You know, you just take like little pieces like this little section and then this and like start putting them together. But it's like the detail work, like how this is like this snare. Like I could have just used this snare. But here that doesn't sound as good as. So you know, it's just taking your time and doing that. And then also having little stuff like this at the end. Like we took that little So it kind of just mixes it up and makes it so that it's not just like the same thing. And yeah, this is really important with the style. You know, if Yak uses these a ton, it can be a little bit tough to get these to fit with like a full drum section like this. The main thing to keep in mind is just like getting a break that's going to fit well. Like in the case of this one. You know, it's just, it's got a lot of mid-range, it's got a lot of stuff that you're not getting from the cymbals. And you're not getting from the kick. So then when you put it in there, it fits, versus like if you find something that's kind of fighting for space with everything else, it can be a bit more messy. And then for effects on this one, we just got a little bit of drum bus to kind of make it a bit stronger and a bit fatter. This is really important with like the more modern sounds. Like, I find people just kind of using drum breaks like really dry. And it doesn't really work that way because you have all this other stuff in here that sounds really hard. So it's like... You can hear you really need that break to punch through. So you need something like drum bus or some saturation to kind of beef it up. And then I just have a high pass filter and that is it for the break beat. After that we have the stab which sounds like this. So this is your standard sort of stab pattern you'd hear in a lot of Fiox tracks and a lot of other artists are using this now as well. It's a very popular sort of sound. The pattern is like this. So what's happening as you can see is just single notes. With these sort of stabs, the way it works is they're playing chords. So like if we play these on their own, you can hear that's a little chord. And that's a little chord. And so you don't need to write in chords to do this. That's the idea here, is that you have this just playing these chords and then you're just transposing a chord around the keyboard. And that's what gives you that kind of cool sound. But yeah, here's the pattern. The main thing to keep in mind with these patterns is like... You know, just trying to make it catchy. And sort of resolving it as well, like the way it goes back to that A sharp there. And then the A, you get that burr, burr. It resolves it really nicely, and I think this is important for like making it just overall sound professional and interesting and catchy because it's very easy to make a stab pattern. You know, anybody could just throw in a bunch of random notes, but to really make something catchy with this is what really stands out with these kinds of tracks, I feel like. I think I've done that pretty well here. But yeah, so. With the sound, we have two layers. We have this chord stuff. And this one. We're putting them together. This is how it typically works with these style of tracks. You would take like a few of these old school stabs that like, you know, maybe in a 90s track you would have just used one of these on their own. But here we layer them together and we get this really full fat sounding stab. And it also has like a more modern feel to it where it's not just like, oh, that's this stab, that's this stab. You can't really tell exactly which one it is, but it just really exemplifies what you want out of these kinds of stabs. And yeah, and then we just have it going through a little bit of echo, just throwing eighth notes just to give it a bit of space, a bit of saturation, fattening it up, and then a high pass filter. The processing isn't really that hard. Again, if you just layer maybe two, maybe three at the most, three could work if they're the right sounds. And then just have a cool and catchy pattern, you know, it all comes together pretty quick. And yeah, after that we have the cymbals which sound like this. So the main two here are this closed hi-hat and then this open hi-hat. And so these are important because if you just have the drum break and the kick, I'll play it for you. And we'll have that clap horn. You notice how it doesn't really have, like it kind of sounds like the break because, no pun intended, but it's because like, it doesn't really have that like crisp high end to it. So that's where these symbols come in. 
And they also add a lot of energy, as you can hear. So yeah, it's important to kind of keep it in mind like this. Like, we're sort of building this around the breakbeat, because I would say, like, the main idea of this track is this. You know, that's sort of like the main pieces. And then all this other stuff around it is just meant to serve that and sort of beef that up. So like the kick and the clap, you know, are just kind of fitting into that. And then these hi-hats, same deal. And then I also have this ride here, actually, which I didn't include. We have it in here. Like when you get this project file, you will get this. I just kind of added this. I thought it might be a little bit too much in this mix. But maybe you could have a part where like this closed hi-hat goes away and then you do something like that. You could even do like these three symbols and then no breakbeat. There's a lot of different combinations and you can play around with that for your arrangement too. But yeah, just having this ride in there, you know, just adds that extra little bit of depth I feel like with the hi-hat as you can see. You just got a little bit of chorus, low pass cutting off like the sharp highs to make it a little bit more lo-fi sounding, saturation, and then a high pass filter. And then on the group of cymbals, we just have a bit of drum bust. That's it. You know, the idea with this is we just want it to sound kind of crunchy and textured and fat. And to kind of fit the texture of the rest of the track. So if you just have these like really dry, you can hear. You know, it sounds a little bit too crisp. But if you crunch them together with this drum bus, it really gives it that extra bit of texture to make it fit into this track. And then the last layer that we have here is the clap, which sounds like this. So this is just playing on the two and the four. This kind of goes back to what I was saying, like doubling up what the drum break is doing. And yeah, you get this cool rhythm because you have on the first beat, or the first time the snare hits in the break, it's hitting at the same time as the clap, and then the second time you get this like, this little kick, like that, which adds a lot to the track rhythmically, you know? You have to think about all these different elements and like how they're sort of doing call and response with each other, and like all that kind of thing. Because it's not just about like, oh, let's have a clap, let's have a breakbeat, let's have a stab. It's like, how are these things all fitting together in a rhythmic and interesting way that engages the listener? And yeah, so this one, it's more about the sample, you know, it's just like a fat clap sound. Going through a bit of drum bust. And then that's it for the clap. And that is also going to be it for this video, guys. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets. Everything from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.